in this video, what we're going to do is that we're going to, first of all, normalize this function. So we call that we obtained this function in one of the earlier examples in the book. And then we can normalize this by finding what this constant c0 should be. So at this point, c0 is still just an arbitrary constant. And then we are going to find an exact value for z0 that will allow this function to be normalized. And then once we find what r20 is, we can then construct our function xi200 r. And so these numbers here would correspond to the quantum numbers 2 is n, uh, 0 this l, and this 0 it will correspond to n. And then in order to find this expression, first of all, we will need to normalize r20. So that's what we're going to do first. We are going to normalize this function. So in order to normalize r20, what that means is that we need to consider this integral over here, r squared dr, and then we need to consider this integral, and then we need to f set the constant c0 in such a way such that this integral will be evaluated to 1. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to substitute this expression inside this integral. So first of all, we have r squared, and then we're going to square this expression, which would give us c0 squared divided by 4a squared, and then we have 1 minus r over 2a squared, and then we also need to square the e term, so it becomes e to the power of negative r over a dr. And so, of course, I can pull out some of these constants. And then I'm going to break up the, this square term over here, so this just becomes 1 minus r over a plus r squared over 4a squared times e to the power of negative r over a dr. And then I'm going to simplify this integral a bit to make it easier to evaluate by using a substitution. So I'm going to let u be equal to r over a. So that means du dr is equal to 1 over a, and that means dr is going to be equal to a du. And so moving on to the next page, by applying that substitution, now we can rewrite our integral as something like this. So r squared is going to be equal to au squared. And then this polynomial here will become 1 minus u plus u squared over 4. So don't forget there's a 4 over here. And then the e term becomes e to the power of negative u. And then the dr becomes a du. And so of course we can see that we have several of these a's over here. We can just pull those outside of the interval. Oh, and don't forget the bounds. When r is equal to 0, u is equal to 0. When r is equal to infinity, u is also equal to infinity. So the bounds also go from 0 to infinity. And then I'm going to pull out the a to the power of 3. And then I'm going to dump the u square inside the bracket. And so this is what we are going to get. So now all that remains for us to do is to evaluate this integral. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to rewrite our integral into a combination of several smaller integrals. So I'm going to rewrite our integral into something like this. And then you can see that all the individual integrals, they all take on the same form. So 1 over 4 u to the power of 4 u to the power of negative u du. So for each of these individual integrals, you can uh, definitely in, uh, integrate these using integration by parts, but that's going to be a bit tedious. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take, I'm going to take a shortcut, and then I'm going to invoke the so-called gamma function. And the gamma function is defined in such a way, uh, and it is well known that if your input z is an integer, let's say an integer n, then this will evaluate to n minus 1 factorial. And it's actually easy to prove this. You can use integration by parts to prove that this statement is true if your gamma function is defined in such a way. So if you're interested in that, you can look that over yourself. It's not that difficult. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to invoke this result just to save myself some time. And then you can see that our integral will now be evaluated into something like this. So you can just match the numbers with this expression over here. So you have u squared, and then for a given input z, the power of u should be z minus 1. So you can think of 2 as being equal to 3 minus 1. You can think of 3 as being equal to 4 minus 1, and 4 as being equal to 5 minus 1. And so what that means is that this integral over here is going to be equal to the gamma function evaluated at 3, 
and then this will be the gamma function evaluated at 4, and then you have 1 over 4 of the gamma function evaluated at 5. And then according to this formula, this is just going to be equal to 2 factorial, this is going to be equal to 3 factorial, and then this is going to be equal to 4 factorial. And then 2 factorial is just equal to 2, 3 factorial is equal to 6, and then 4 factorial is just equal to 4 times 6, which is equal to 24. And then don't forget you need to divide this by 4, so in the end it also becomes 6. So this entire thing also becomes 6. So your entire integral is going to become something like this. You have 2 minus 6, so minus 6, and then plus 6. So in the end you get c0 squared times e divided by 2. So these cancel out, and then you have a 2 that cancels out with this. So you see that this entire expression, c0 squared times a divided by 2, is going to be equal to 1, because we're trying to normalize this function. And so you see that the, uh, the constant c0 is just going to be equal to the square root of 2 divided by a. And so there you have it. This is how you normalize your r2,0. So going back here, we have successfully normalized our r2,0. We just need to substitute square root of 2 over a for c0. And so now we're ready to construct our function xi. So we want to construct xi200, zero zero, r theta 5. And don't forget, this is actually a combination of the radial component and the spherical harmonics. So the spherical harmonics in this case is evaluated at L equal to 0 and M equal to 0. So it's just Y0, zero zero, theta 5. And then you can easily look this up. And in one of the earlier questions, we also had to derive this. And this is actually just equal to 1 over the square root of 4 pi. And so we can actually just directly substitute everything inside this expression now. We're going to take this expression and then dump it in here as well. So what we're going to get is 1 over the square root of 4 pi, and then we have our c0 square root of 2 over a, and then we have 1 over 2a, 1 minus r divided by 2a, e times e to the power of negative r over 2a. So of course we can slightly simplify some of these terms over here. So let's just combine these terms in the square root, and then we have a 1 over 2a, and then I'm just going to write these terms out again. And so there you have it. This is going to be the function that we are that we would like to construct. So this function, this expression here, is our xi200. And so that's how you do the normalization, and that's how you construct the function.